Was it the comma the whole time? I guess so. Shut the fuck up. That is the <laughs> stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> Craig, what the... F okay, for context, before we were so gravely interrupted by a several months long hiatus, we were largely having trouble with our audio recording bot for Discord. And for several, several months, we were just like struggling with alternate solutions. We kept having uh, issues with Zencaster, and we tried Me6. We tried a bunch of things. None of them worked as well as Craig did, except Craig wasn't working. The problem is that there was a minor change to how to summon Craig, in which it's no longer colon Craig colon, it's colon Craig colon comma. I have to yeah. use correct I have to use a correct like like dialogue tag comma. I have to use correct grammar to talk to Craig, <laughs> which is uh horseshit. That's problematic. Yeah that that sucks. That's uh that's low key sus. Yeah, Craig. All right. So, uh, welcome to Torture Shopping Network, the uh, show that is back and is not as good as ever, but, like, it'll do. It'll do nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just Emmy and Anna tonight. Uh, Katie's feet hurt from work, and Mia has a job now that is prohibitively, like, time-consuming. Yeah, everything that Mia was doing for us, she now does uh, full-time for someone that will actually pay her money. And yeah. by that, I mean a local television station in her general area. So, so <laughs> if you don't get... If Mia's not on very often, it's not because there was some falling out. It's just because somebody literally... It's just because one of the broadcast networks poached her with real money. Which... <laughs> yeah. uh, which, uh, fuck you, CBS. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think she's on a CBS affiliate. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not... yeah, I think she said something about CBS. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, welcome to Torture Shopping Network. I would be remiss if I did not mention at the outset here the passing of a true stalwart of his field, a real legend in the flesh. Um, a man who has withstood the test of time, time and time again, and who also had a penchant for occasionally saying things that were a, a little bit troubling, but nevertheless very charming. I am, of course, talking about the beloved musician DMX. Yep. I, I mean, I mean, if, just just listen to the first like forty five seconds of Where the Hood At. Yeah. And just. I mean, don't get me wrong, as somebody who has trouble with, uh, as somebody who has trouble with, like, uh, cis gay people and their, uh, shenanigans, I've got no love for homo thugs either, but I wouldn't say <laughs> that on the radio in 2003. I feel like that would, I don't know. In any case, though, this is a, this is a man who kept orchids. This is a man who... Yeah, this is a man who had a gentle and kind side and also wanted to beat the ever-loving fuck out of George Zimmerman. Yep. And for that, we mourn his passing. Yeah, also some rich white guy died. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know how he got rich. I think it was from taking other people's money, but like, I don't know. His, his wife's an yeah. old bat anyway, and... I mean, she's probably yeah. next. I mean, let's let's be kidding. Her whole family's just a bunch of white trash, fucking like, like, like prematurely balding inbred people and pedophiles and just just weird venal racists. They'd fit. They'd fit right in in Kentucky. And I'm <laughs> saying Kentucky in particular because the person who's staying at our house spent most of her formative years in Louisville. So. So this is for you, Heaven. Paducah? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, Paducah, not Louisville. Okay, Paducah. I am corrected by our producer that Heaven lived in Paducah, and I'm going to be told later that I pronounced that wrong. It's really Paducah, but no, it's <laughs> not. I don't know. 
Doesn't matter. Point is, it's been a while. We're fucking back. Yeah. But yeah, Prince Philip died too. And I think the thing that struck me was just how many places they could stick a picture of him yeah. in Britain. Because, like, there's this <laughs> picture of, like, there's this picture of somebody driving on an overpass. And there's these those electric billboards, and they both just have his fucking face, and it on a black background, him and his whole like little I'm the prince consort outfit, <laughs> with his little sash and his epaulets and his shoulder cords. I mean, you'd be mistaken for thinking it's Alice Caldwell Kelly at a distance, but then again, you realize <laughs> that she somehow also has more hair than him. That's mean. I shouldn't pick on Alice. She's having... I mean, if you read her Twitter, she's self-conscious about her hairline, but, like, she looks mm -hmm. great. This this one goes out... This one goes out to a fellow, like, uh, player of the game, Alice Caldwell Kelly. And like I said, it wouldn't be Torture Shopping Network if we didn't immediately resume all our bad habits. <laughs> so. Anna. Yeah. You discovered something by way of being on the internet, potentially <laughs> more than the rest of us lately, because I've just been swamped with bullshit. But you discovered an interesting piece of broadcast media that I want you to share with us. And I'm not saying anything else, but except to say that this really does dovetail very well with a classic episode of ours called Cowboy Church and that it has vaguely something to do with Christianity that is not correct. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I shouldn't I, I shouldn't immediately dog on Christian science like that. I'm probably gonna get a letter if they, <laughs> if they listen to this. I get a strong I mean I actually used to live really close to a Christian science reading room. There was one on the way there's one on the way to like where I go to get coffee sometimes. It just looks like a nice, nice, gentle place. Anyway, I think I've spoiled too much. Go, Junior Christian Science Bible Lesson Show. What is it? Why do I care? And why do you keep putting it in the Discord? <laughs> okay, so the Junior Christian Bible Science Lesson Program Show, don't worry yet, the title's kind of wonky, um, was a public access show in Los Angeles that ran from 1988 to 2008. And then had a brief revival in two, 2011. And basically what it is, is it's the producer slash creator, David Hart, doing puppet shows and having guests on to basically do an un, a, an otherwise uninteresting Christian science sermon. And, I mean, if you look but at it like that. Puppets. The puppets. And, you know, flesh humans, too. Flesh humans, as opposed to wood humans, I guess. And so anyways, yeah, like, on the surface, like, that just sounds kind of, you know, whatever. But <laughs> when you watch it, it's just, the production values are, you know, very much what you would expect of a low-budget public access show from the 80s. And, like, trust me, they are stuck in the 80s pretty much the entire runtime. Like, near 2008, okay, now we're looking at early 2000s quality, but, like, it, it was public access. What can we say? Um, um, there was that, and then there, I mean, I guess there was the content of the shows themselves, which, honestly, make a Catholic mass look entertaining and informative for a kid. Oof. <laughs> yeah, Oof. yeah. Like, honestly, if you had put a Catholic priest in that show, like, it have been more interesting and more entertaining than what came out, at least intentionally so. The statement does not and reflect the opinions of the Catholic Church. That's true. Um, yeah. <laughs> And so basically, it's like these long Bible readings, long prayer sessions, interspersed with these long song interludes, which, to David Lee Park's credit, are actually like very well sung, very nice. It's just that the accompaniment is so awful. Like, we're talking like Casio's MIDI, like MIDI type backing, like 
it's just it's ridiculous. And For our viewers on YouTube, and I forgot to mention that I am screen recording us, and that we are going to be on YouTube. In the corner, I am going to prepare to put in a. Uh, I'm gonna put in, and I'm doing this live, so I did not have a scene transition put together. I'm still putting together like what we would do in OBS for this. So you're gonna watch us build in real time. <laughs> I mean, you might you might watch us build in real time. There's a little clip in the corner of it. This is just the first thing that came up when I <laughs> searched for Junior Christian Science Bible Lesson Show. It in YouTube. Oh, here's the crop. I don't... I want to be very clear. I'm not good at OBS. I'm not good at things. Is anybody... 280, 260. Also, the way OBS does cropping is just dreadful. <laughs> 160. 40. There we go. Right. 400. 600. 700 there i'm just 650 i feel like i'm on prices right i'm just trying to go <laughs> higher and lower until i get the screen right fucking shape <laughs> 675 bob there we go all right and now i'm bidding on the dresser 150 140 130 136 35 34 33 32 ding all right so if you are watching in the corner of your screen you should see a man uh, let me see, is there a description on this video even? It might actually say who... I'm reading the comments here. You, you'll see me scrolling through the comments. Uh, a man singing a song, I believe that is entitled, I Love the Christians. So let's oh, have that. Oh I, oh, I love that song. I'm so happy to be a Christian. I'm so happy to be I'm just gonna a love Christian. It Oh, it's I Love Christmas. Oh, I love... Yes, that one's good. Yes. I love Christmas. I it's... love Christmas. Okay, that, that clip is, like, spectacular because it really embodies, like, the theology and what makes the Junior Christian Science Bible Lesson Show so, like, otherwise remarkable. Because, like, let's be real. If it, if it weren't... There's a lot of it sorry, there are a lot of components of this show that on the surface seem uninteresting, but if you go deeper, like if you watch, like, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, there's a a lot going on a there. Lot. I mean, Christian science is a very uh, interesting ideology. I'm not sure yet what to uh, make of it because I don't, I haven't watched enough of this to fully, like, internalize like the tenets of uh, Mary Baker Eddy's ideology and also uh, I think if I tried too hard to I think we'd end up into like you know you know Scientology has a channel on direct TV really yeah Scientology has a satellite channel wow. I mean it's one of those it's like up in the 900s or whatever on your uh. on cable but it's like a 24-7, like, Scientology infomercial. And it just sort of is on all the time. It's not, oh. like, it's not quite like, like, EWTN or whatever. Did I get the order right? I don't think I got the order right. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's cable. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, it's like TBN. I should have gone with the one that's easier. <laughs> it's just three letters. It's not like that for Scientology. It's literally just... A twenty four seven Barker channel for for Scientology. It's literally just <laughs> oh you're oh this is Scientology. This is what we are about, and that's <laughs> really about it. I actually got a warning while I, in OBS while I was playing the I Love Christmas song. Is I uh, it said encoding overloaded, and I'm just sitting here like, oh boy. That's, uh, that's wild. Let me just, uh, tinker with some things here. I'm just playing around for a second with, uh, if that's not what I want. I don't want audio output caption. I'm doing the wrong thing. 
Do I want that? What do I want? Uh, da, 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 da. And it's fine. Anyway, I just got distracted by like the computer and things. But like, here's roughly where where we are. Is uh, man that that didn't produce as much content as I thought it would. It's, it's a shame, but there really isn't that much to it. It's just like this is very much. A uh, a piece of media from its time. One thing that is not a piece of media from its time is Meow Wolf's newest uh, permanent installation, Omega Mart. Anna, are you still with us? Anna? Anna? Okay, we seem to have lost Anna. That it wouldn't be Torture Shopping Network if I didn't have to like oh Anna's back? Am I back? You're back. I am back. You're back. Alright. <laughs> I was getting into I was actually gonna segue us to uh to Omega Mart. Yeah. So uh yeah, I get this video recommended in my uh recommended and it's this picture of a lemon with an eyeball. And I just sit there and I'm like, why? Why am I looking at this? I'm not going to watch this. And then I decide after like three or four times of YouTube, like foisting this video on me that I'm going to look at it. So I click through and I watch. And uh, it's a commercial about a, a lemon recall. And it's. And I sort of start digging, and I'm like, okay, what is this? Is this some kind of new analog horror thing? Because if you're a longtime listener to our show, you know we fucking love analog horror. Yes, we do. And it kind of is. But it's like this, like, from this outfit called Meow Wolf, who do, like, these physical installations mm -hmm. of, like, surrealist, like, commercial art. I don't know how else to describe it, but in this case, their latest thing is a grocery store, and that doesn't do it justice. It's called Omega Mart, and, uh, and the component that's on YouTube is a series of very strange commercials, chief among them being that lemon one, but there's also one for romantic dinner in a can. Uh, Orange drink orange drink which apparently causes like a pale not pale like a substantial mm -hmm. orange glow there's a component to this and the lemon one that i should mention that i love and it's mm -hmm. that there is a phone number on screen that is an actual 800 number that they have and you can call it and they have an ivr that extends the content yeah and you and i each encountered it like you called for the orange, and you got mm -hmm. the and you got the message about like about your <laughs> about skin. Hang on, what, what was the exact about phrase, Anna? The radiant orange skin. And because of your bravery as a test subject, you'll get five percent off your next purchase. Show your skin to the cashier. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of those really good. Uh, one of those really good uh, sort of analog horror dealios, kind of, I don't know how else to describe it, but it sort of goes beyond that because it has a physical component and it has a component. Like, I'd like to see more of this. Yeah. Like, I know this is like some sort of a big name. They, ha they have enough money to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one thing, but like, the main... The main thing that I'm interested in is, like, extending it to other forms of media. Like, you and I go all the way back to the uh, Wyoming incident, right? We, yeah. Yeah, we go, like, that was my first analog horror. And that was kind of, like, the, f I mean, of, like, analog horror shit, like, that's one of the really early ones. So it's, like, before we had a name for the genre, before there was, like, yeah. Local 58 and, like, 
And it was just like an ARG or like an attempt at like getting one going or it's like, oh, the, yeah, like broadcast intrusion in general is fertile ground too. And I wish there was like more, more skillful exploration of broadcast intrusion as a, uh, as a means of, an, of doing analog horror. Mostly because it's like the ones I've seen were that play on broadcast intrusion suck. Yeah. Like they are not very well done. There's the one that's like a broadcast intrusion that like it's like don't go to the authorities, they will kill you if you mm-hmm. if you tell them about our like intrusion to play a JFK documentary. <laughs> but yeah. like like that one I enjoyed, but I feel like it could have used uh more. Mm-hmm. Not not even like more of any particular thing, just more. Like I feel like yeah. that could have been developed on a little bit. Because it got a lot of things right. It just mm-hmm. it was insubstantial. I don't remember hang on. Uh I'm just gonna throw in analog horror into YouTube and hope I get there. Uh Gemini Home Entertainment's good. Mm. What is going on? I'm just going through here. Yeah. Um, WWBN. Hmm? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for remembering <laughs> which one it is. Because I wasn't going to remember. I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not going to like try to clip that into the thing because I think there's something wrong with. Oh, they actually did a, uh, they actually did another video. They've done a few yeah. videos, actually. I didn't, it's been a while since I've checked on them, actually. Here, I've got a playlist I can drop in the chat. Yeah. Awesome. Please drop the playlist. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. I'll look at these later, because it's like... <laughs> Amy? Hi, hello. Hi. Just making sure you can still hear me. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you for a sec, but we're, we're back. Okay, we're here. Queer. <laughs> I, I vary. <laughs> oh, man, what else is going on? I'm just sort of, like, scrolling through here, looking through all kinds of, like, just just wild stuff. What? Someone made a cereal commercial. Mm. Someone made... I'm just looking through here because I think what we may want to do at some point is just, mm. like, grab a bunch of these and do a stream. Yeah. Welcome to Torture Shopping Network, the show where we just plan other things we might do. <laughs> but yeah, there's been a lot going on. I I hesitate to be like I mean, I hesitate to like cut this short just because this is kind of like a test to make sure our current uh our current uh what's the word I'm looking for? I am not wording very well. Our current setup works. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just we're just gonna test this. And we're gonna call this a test episode. I'm gonna see if the uh, YouTube version works. You're getting a nice, a nice little glimpse into our Discord momentarily because that's the easiest way of doing multiple faces on screen without going through another app. <laughs> but I think we might actually just cut this short tonight, just because I don't think we have a whole lot to talk about, and I mostly just want to like already get into the booth and just make sure all this works. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this has been a brief reprisal from Torture Shopping Network. One thing you have to look forward to is I'm going to info dump to everybody for a very long time about McDonald land. Yeah. That is, that is coming. That might be the full episode. And this is kind of like the teaser, but I just want to uh, let you know that we're all still very much alive. And we're just, we just all have jobs now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just bear with us. We're getting a lot of the, a lot of the problems ironed out that we were having. We are returning to you. This is going to be a short one. 
it's going to be like broadcast TV length instead of broadcast TV drama length. <laughs> so this is going to be like one camera sitcom length. So you'll live with that for now. But we're coming. We're coming. I am going to stop recording on OBS first. Okay. And now I'm going to kick out Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs>